Joining me now, Luciano Rezola from, he's in Brussels and he's a member of the Event Horizon Telescope. Hello, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. So how are you feeling about this achievement? I'm definitely much more relieved now that we are able to openly talk about it and explain people what we found. Uh, it have been several weeks where we had this result, but we could not uh, reveal it. And it's very frustrating for uh, someone who's a scientist whose passion is about to tell people what, uh, what he has studied and found. Could you try explaining to us how it's even possible to capture an image of something so, so far away? Well, you know, capturing an image of something that is far away is not difficult. Telescopes are exactly built to do that. Um, what is more difficult in this case is two things. The first one is capturing something that cannot shine. And the second thing is capturing having a very high resolution. So um, to get high resolution, what you need is a very large telescope. But even the largest telescopes that we have on Earth are not big enough. So what you can do to, res to, to, to cope with this is to imagine that you build a virtual telescope, which is actually made of several telescopes observing the same object at exactly the same time. And then this is effectively as you have a huge telescope the size of the Earth. <clears throat> this is a technique which is called very large baseline interferometry, and that's the technique that the EHT has used to reach high resolution and therefore look at something which is of the order of the size of the, of the event horizon. Now, the event horizon of a black hole is this surface, this mathematical surface which absorbs everything, even light. And so you cannot possibly observe an event horizon, but you can convince it yourself that there is an event horizon because if you shine light near event horizon, then some of the light will be engulfed, absorbed by the, the event horizon, and you will not see. This is best seen in this cube here, which is just uh, showing some photon trajectories. Um, and you can see that a photon in a, in near a black hole does not move in straight line. It actually bends. And you can see some of these light rays are bent. And some of these light rays will actually go into the black hole. So if you see from this side now, there is a circle. It's, that's the edge of the region where photons, where light is trapped. And that is what is the shadow. So the shadow is bigger than the event horizon. And if you see a shadow, which is not exactly dark, but darker than the rest, then that's a very strong indication that in that shadow there is an event horizon. And that's pretty much what we have done and what you can see in this image uh, behind me. You can see that there is, um, it's like a donut, and the center of this donut is the shadow. And uh, there is a ring, looks like a smile, and that's actually plasma moving at relativistic speeds and shining towards us. OK, so what extent is this going to help us understand black holes and just how many are there out there? And do you think this will help convince the skeptics? Well, skeptics will always remain skeptic um, because most of the time they are not using, you know, uh, facts to base their judgment. But um, certainly this will convince the scientists that uh, there are black holes. And how many black holes there are? Well, this size of black holes, these supermassive black holes, we think there is one in every galaxy and there are billions of galaxies. So there are lots of black holes. These are black holes of the ma of, that have masses of the order a million to a billion solar masses. And as I said, they are essentially one in each galaxy. And they, this observation will help us um, understand whether or not event horizon exists. This is a fundamental element in, in, in understanding physics, because inside an event horizon, it, 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 you cannot perform any test. You can perform a test, but you cannot transmit the result of this test to anyone. So it's like a no-go area. It's like a closed door. We think we know what's behind the door, but once we cross that door, there is no turning back. And so now we are proving uh, the evidence that there is such a door, and it behaves like Einstein predicted. And what's next for you and the rest of the team? So um, 
ever from the start, we had two targets. One is uh, M87, the one we have seen now, and the other one is Sagittarius A-star. Sagittarius A-star is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And that's our next goal. We are now analyzing the data, and um, we hope to be able to tell something about that black hole soon. There are uh, difficulties and, 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 and uh, a lot more to learn from that black hole. The difficulty is that this is a smaller black hole and so has a typical variation time scale, which is of the order of, of minutes, um, tens of minutes. And we're taking a picture that lasts about hours. So you have that while you're taking a picture, the subject in the picture is actually moving. So that makes taking a picture, as you can imagine, much more difficult. In the case of M87, the one we have presented today, that's a much quieter because it's bigger. The typical movement takes about two days, and so within a, a time span of eight hours, you have essentially that the subject doesn't move. 